Hello Mauernauts, welcome to the first Mauer monthly video. This is a special February and March remote and quarantine version of the Double M. So sit back, relax, here comes the facts. Battling online coronavirus scams with facts. Cyber criminals created their own version of the Johns Hopkins COVID-19 tracking map in application form. When users install the map, it also installs the Azer Alt or the DanaBot information stealing malware. This malware will steal operating system logins, Steam account credentials, and bank account info at the very least. The creation of this fake map is in response to growing COVID-19 concerns. Bad guys expect you to click on links or open files if the user believes it's in their best interest, and this is especially true during a crisis. Alternatively, good guys expect you to open links and share information too. Wait. Coronavirus Scams Found and Explained InfoSec experts have recently been collecting COVID-19-themed phishing attempts at alarming levels. One researcher created a way to start tracking the creation of coronavirus-themed domains. These domains are used in phishing attacks to spread malware or steal information under the guise of a trusted source, like the World Health Organization. In just 24 hours, over 3,600 newly created domains were discovered. This post is a fantastic resource to explain how current news is co-opted by cybercriminals to spread threats. It lists eight different campaigns we've observed, many pretending to be from the WHO, and all of them claim to provide valuable information if you would just open this file or click this link. D-Link and Linksys routers hacked to point users to coronavirus-themed malware. Attackers have been breaking into D-Link and Linksys routers using default admin passwords, then modifying the router settings to utilize a DNS server controlled by the attackers. This allows the bad guys to trick users trying to navigate to a legitimate website. However, the website they actually end up on could be pushing malware or trying to steal their personal information. Researchers have discovered that users are being redirected to a website which urges victims to install a COVID-19 information application. In reality, they are installing the OSCE information stealing malware. Let's break this down. In order to reach any website, a system has to consult with a domain name service or DNS server. These devices convert domain names like google.com into an IP address the router can use to navigate to the server. It's like looking up the address of a restaurant. You know the name of the restaurant, and you can search online to find the address. However, if someone changed the address associated online with the restaurant, people would end up navigating to the wrong building. Most modern routers, be it for home or business, allow for the specification of what DNS server it should use to resolve domain names. This can be changed by the router administrator. So the way this attack works is a local network router is accessed using the device's default administrator credentials. Next, the attacker changes which DNS server the router uses, instead making it request domain name resolution from the attacker-controlled DNS server. Then, if the user navigates to something like Amazon.com, the malicious DNS server will return the IP address for a website controlled by the attacker. However, the user won't be able to immediately realize that they are on a phishing site because their browser is telling them they are on Amazon.com. Finally, the malicious website urges the victim to download malware, pretending that it's a valuable COVID-19 information application. APT36 jumps on the coronavirus bandwagon, delivers Crimson Rat. The Pakistani state-sponsored group known as APT36 is spreading phishing emails pretending to be from the government of India. These emails include malware-loaded documents which install the Crimson Remote Access Trojan, which can be used for espionage, data theft, or user harassment. This is an important read because while technical, it gives some view into the world of state-sponsored cyber operations. It also provides an example of future scams we will likely see using either this pandemic or another devastating event. Fake Coronavirus Antivirus Distributes Black Net Remote Administration Tool Scammers are trying to convince folks to install an antivirus application that, while running, prevents them from being infected with the novel coronavirus. However, this application actually installs the BlackNet Remote Access Trojan. This gives new meaning to, there's an app for that. Oh no, there's an outbreak of giant head disease in my area. I haven't had my inoculations. Wait, there's an app I can download that will help keep me safe. Oh man, <laughs> what a relief. One hour later. One star! Hackers using coronavirus scare to spread emotet malware in Japan. 
Attackers are using emails pretending to be a disability welfare service provider in Japan in order to spread the Emotet Trojan. The email reports coronavirus outbreaks in various prefectures in Japan and urges users to access the Word document attached to the email. As we know, Emotet emails usually include an office document, and inside of that document is a malicious script which downloads and executes the malware. The theory is that the email content filters may ignore the phishing emails due to it being related to COVID-19, trying to use it basically as a shield. Emotet malware now hacks nearby Wi-Fi networks to infect new victims. A sample of the Emotet Trojan was discovered to have functionality that would allow it to infect the networks of nearby, unsecured Wi-Fi access points. Once connected to the access point, the malware uses a list of passwords to brute force access into the network. While we should be worried about this threat, it's also important to realize that the capability shown today is likely going to be adopted by the malware families of tomorrow. Some threats get a lot of coverage in our presentations. Emotet is one of them which means it's extra special when we can provide new information about an old threat. Misleading cybersecurity lessons from pop culture, how Hollywood teaches to hack. Do you ever get asked how much of hacking on TV and movies is real and how much is baloney? Well, this post from Malwarebytes Labs talks a little bit about how hacking has been shown in the media in the past and what the reality actually is. This is a fun read that may not help you make sales, but it will make you laugh, unless, is this the unnamed account in the Bahamas where the money was to be stashed? I think so. Unlucky! <laughs> Windows 7 is end of life. What next? This post talks about Windows 7's end of life and the benefits of upgrading to Windows 10. You might get these kind of questions, but more likely you'll be talking to someone who is worried about securing their Windows 7 system, and you can either tell them about the security benefits of Windows 10 or reassure them that Malwarebytes products still support and protect their outdated operating systems. Lock and code. Check out the new Malwarebytes Labs podcast, Lock and Code, I'm in one. It's hosted by David Ruiz and they have already pushed out three episodes. So far they've covered RSA, MSP security and privacy. You also hear interviews from top researchers and C-suite executives who provide a deeper dive into the important topics of the day. Also, I'm in one. That's it for this Malware Monthly, folks. Thank you for watching, stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll see you next time.